In this tutorial, we're really expanding on two recent tutorials posted in the Academy, looking more precisely at segment shapes and how our frame in many ways controls how we move. So for example, the concept of wide rib cage, wide pelvis, alongside the other end of that scale, narrow rib cage, narrow pelvis. So really thank you so much for the feedback received so far. And really the request in some ways to expand in more detail around some of those areas and concepts we discussed, especially in the, the tutorial around how our frames really only compress and expand as we move and rotate through our swings. So very much precisely in this tutorial, looking at something called helical angles. So helicals or helixes are spirals. It's the Latin word helix for a spiral. And humans are through design one big spiral system. To give an example, we mentioned in one of the early tutorials around the idea of compression and expansion, how the heart historically within traditional text has kind of looked at four chambers or certainly taught as being four chambers. The reality being is this wonderful eight foot helix. So when you look at heart dissections and actually unravel the heart, it becomes this long eight foot kind of helix shaped rope. So in many ways, the angle of that helix, which we'll come on to in more detail shortly, hugely controls and influences then how we move and rotate through space. So to expand on the helix, the helical concept, we are this wonderful spiral system, which we'll go into in much more detail as we move through this tutorial. So in a very, very kind of expansive way, the shape and size of the segments, mainly in this case, the rib cage or the thorax and the pelvis, will hugely control that helical angle that we have. So to give you an example, if we are a wide rib cage, wide pelvis, that helical angle is much more horizontal. So how those tissues wrap, the soft tissue connections spiral around our system to really give that kind of system its shape and its, and its form. So as we kind of move through space, how those kind of helixes wrap around our body, so things like muscles, tendon, ligaments, fascia, nerves, those connective tissues that we have, because they're on a much wider, more horizontal angle, as they change shape or deform, so if they either kind of lengthen or shorten, depending on what direction we're moving in idea, expanding or compressing, how we pull along those angles and how we pull along those helixes will in essence control the direction and how that shape moves and rotates. So as an example, if we're very wide rib cage, wide pelvis, and that helical angle in our system is much more horizontal, as those muscles either lengthen or shorten, it will historically and inherently pull us more in a much more lateral, horizontal way compared to the narrow human, which we'll come on to shortly. So very much appreciating when we have those shape of rib cages and pelvises, in this case, wide and wide for this part of this tutorial, those helical angles, the angles that those muscles attach into the joint. So we know, in essence, almost every muscle attaches medial lateral inside out. So for example, when looking at, say, that's called external shoulder rotation and or external hip rotation, muscles in many ways form crosses, X's, another helix, another spiral in many ways, with the axis or the direction or orientation it's attempting to rotate and move that joint. This is an example when we have, say, external internal rotation. One of the big internal rotators is, say, pec minor, the small muscle that really runs from the top of the humerus into that kind of thorax. So that runs at right angles to the length of the humerus. So the humerus bone here, the pec minor runs at right angles to that. So once again, forming that cross, that kind of helical shape. So to rotate the arm inwards, we are shortening through pec minor, alongside other areas as well, to create that internal rotation through the arm. Equally so then, when looking at external hip rotations, there are areas such as the upper fibers of glute max, glute medius, glute min, piriformis, they all run once again at right angles to that long femur. So these wonderful kind of helix angles, cross shapes in some ways that we have. So then really expand on that much further. When you are a wide, wide human, we have these very horizontal connective angles. Like I said, muscles pretty much always run inside out, medial lateral. Because they're on a much more horizontal, wider, expansive gradient in that horizontal plane, as we kind of rotate and move, we will get pulled more along the direction of that particular helical angle. And then conversely, when looking at narrow human, so very much unfortunately in my case, the idea of narrow rib cage, narrow pelvis, those helical angles run 
much more vertical. So through design, they're much more moving up and downwards rather than the wide, wide human, which are running much more horizontal. So the vertical angle for narrow, narrow is much greater than the horizontal angle of how those spiral tissues wrap and form around our system to really then obviously allow us to move through space. So for example, the very narrow, narrow human will inherently move up and down more to produce rotation because those muscle connections, those attachments are spiral all the way through our body from our big toe, into our pelvis, through our spine, into our fingers and head, those wonderful connective spirals that they have. Because they're moving and running much more vertically, as we rotate, they will inherently pull us much more up and downwards to produce rotation. So when we look at kind of how golfers move in their swing and why we move the way we do, and really connecting back to that previous observation made in the idea of a compress and expand, very much the concept that we need coaching approaches rather than a coaching approach to really establish and truly appreciate how a player perhaps could move in that wonderful, elastic, most advantageous way. We need to really look at and explore the angle those helixes move through our body because in many ways, as we lengthen and shorten along those tissues, as we compress and expand along those tissues, that will in essence control orientation and position the golfer moves and rotates in. So for example, in that narrow human, narrow ribcage, narrow pelvis, that helical angle is much more vertical. As we lengthen or expand and compress around that angle, it will inherently, just through tissue attachment and bone structure, move us more upwards and downwards. So some question which should come back from the previous tutorials is why do then narrow humans move so much more laterally in transition? They have to move that way through lower body being the response to allow the spine and upper limb to then compress and downstream. So to create space for compression, internal rotation in downstream through kind of spine, scapula, shoulder, neck, hands and arms, we have to in essence kind of make space through lower limb to allow that kind of upper thorax, um